Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I titled this message, Closet Revenge, When the Brokenhearted Don't Wish You Well. When the Brokenhearted Don't Wish You Well. Some of you all, you have tried to reconnect with people from the past because you were encouraged to do so. That's not always a good idea. And I'm learning more and more as I walk with the Lord that the past is meant to be in the past. But there are those triggers. There are those special events. There are the things that people say and people do that will cause one to think about the past and even talk with someone from the past. It doesn't matter if it's an intimate relationship or a professional relationship that once was. The point is, is that as we are moving forward as believers, the past oftentimes gets in the way of the present and future if you let it. Closet revenge. It is happening with some individuals and it is happening in a variety of ways. Some people are nothing more than witches. That means that they sit back and they pray and they chant and they have all sorts of spells and incantations wishing evil while they are smiling and being cordial with their foes. There are those who they're not using paranormal activity to get the job done, but they're simply bad mouthing individuals to mutual friends, family members and others. And then there are those who are quite bold every chance they get. They are finding ways to pay someone back, whether directly or indirectly. Closet revenge is tempting, especially if you think that you're not going to be caught. Closet revenge is also wishing evil upon people. Even though that person hasn't got up and walked and did too much of anything, the point is, is that their evil thoughts are attacking Now, I know some people don't believe in too much of anything. They don't believe that folks got any type of power. They don't believe that Jesus is real. They don't believe that the Bible is significant. They just don't believe. But those are the folks that Satan likes to mess with. The people who claim they don't believe in anything. Sudden illnesses, accidents, strange occurrences, deja vu, paranormal activity, These folks who are walking blindly, they get beat up blindly too. They are walking around with this uh, cloth over their eyes, so to speak. And this cloth is black and they can't see through it. And the enemy is portion and shoving and kicking, bad mouthing and doing all sorts of evil things. And the individual is still saying with the blinders over his or her eyes, I don't believe. I don't believe. Can you picture that? How silly that looks? You're being hit. You're being knocked down. You're losing. There's somebody who's an enemy. They're after you. They're wishing evil upon you. They're the ones that are the master. They they are the ones that are the masterminds behind bringing you down. Nope. I don't believe it. Okay. Then keep getting beat up then. No strategy, no plan, no blood covering in the name of Jesus. Nothing. Just walking around, getting beat down supernaturally as well as in the natural. Some people think that exes have long forgotten and long gotten over some things. And I found out that that's not the truth. Some people are still harboring ill feelings. I remember back when I first got on Facebook and I reached out to a whole bunch of people. And in that group, some of those folks brought up some past events. I was on another website and someone had reached out to me and said, remember when? And they had said some unflattering things that I had said way back when about them. And so, of course, I had to update the person and say, well, listen, I'm not that person anymore. And I'm saying all along in my head, like that was like, what, 25, 30 some years ago. But some people. They will hold things and they'll keep holding things. And even after you apologize and even after you pay for something and even after you uh, do all that you can to provide a service and they still will bring up the past. Now, there's nothing we can do about people who choose to be unforgiving. They choose to be set in their ways. There's nothing we can do about that person who is set on 
uh, just bringing us down. But what we can do is we can go to the one true God. You see, the things that are not in our power, yes, we're powerless. But the things that are in our power, we are powerful. And one thing we can do is fast over a situation. That means giving up something that you truly like, enjoy, what have you, food, vegetables, uh, <laughs> meat, desserts. You can also pray. Because you want the Lord to intervene. You want some spiritual insight as to how you can deal with this person or group. You might even need to enlist the help of law enforcement, depending on how bad this person is. You might even have to get an attorney. Some people, they wiggle their way into people's lives, even though they thought that it was over, it's finished. I thought we were cool. But from a distance, they wiggle their way in by mutual family members and friends, in-laws, they will find a way. And then once they get you to where they want you to be, which is to trust them, to open up, to tell them about your life, to tell them about your partner, to tell them about your kids, then they're going to stick it to you again. Oh, for some people, they're just sitting back and they're waiting for that opportune time because I'm going to get you. I am going to pay you back. The person who's sitting in the closet they are not coming out just yet. That's why I titled this message Closet Revenge. They are contemplating. They are planning. They are scheming. They are not showing their true colors. So they're still in the closet. But one day they're going to come out and they're going to start talking. They're going to start sharing. Like I said, some folks that I come across on the Internet. Look. I'm not thinking about you or anything from way back when, but they want to bring up some things. Okay, so we brought it up, so we discussed it, so it's over with. Oh, at least you think it is, but it's not over with for some people. There are some people who they are, they are offended over the slightest infraction, over the littlest of things. Things that we wouldn't even be concerned about. Oh, someone cut them off. While they were driving, right? Now they are saying, I can't wait to see her again because I'm going to pay her back. Someone says something that they deemed was inappropriate or disrespectful. Oh, just wait. I'm going to pay him back for what he said. Some Something that didn't even have anything to do with them, but yet it was a brother, a sister, a cousin, a child. Oh, don't you worry. I'm going to get him for old and for new. Oh, so-and-so didn't call. So-and-so didn't come around. Oh, that's all right. The next family event, I'm going to tell her about her ugly self. Oh, please. This is ridiculous. And the Lord showed me just how ridiculous some of these people are. And for years, I used to sit back and say, well, that, that, I guess that's okay for them to behave that way. I guess that's justified. The Lord said, no, it's not. It's toxic. It's dysfunctional. And I don't want you falling in their ways. There's nothing right about sitting back and contemplating revenge. He said, vengeance is mine. If he feels that you have been wrongly mistreated, disrespected, whatever, then he will deal with it because I gave the grievance over to the Lord. And let me tell you, when I allowed the Lord to deal with people, places and things, you know that he was able to administer justice in a way that I would have never even dreamed because he knows their heart. And sometimes it's one of those things where there is no attribution necessary. You see, they don't need to know that you was praying. They don't need to know that you uh, was the culprit behind whatever. They don't need to know that your signature was on such and such document. God can do some things in such a clever way that the person don't even know that he is fighting on your behalf. I have warned people in the past. And I'm still warning people. You need to watch what you're doing. Concerning exes. Concerning toxic folks. Concerning the lies. And the secrets. And the cover ups. Because God is going to pay. Some folks back for all of their wrongdoing. I even told some folks. You want to go to church? Not told but asked. <laughs> Would you like to go to church? No. Then there were times where, yes, I did tell. Now I'm on that subject. 
And I told him and I told him some more. And the Lord said, stop talking to them about church. Don't even mention it. Because when I come in, they aren't going to have a chance to do too much of anything. Going back to the days of Noah, Noah's building the ark, right? And when the flood came, the people didn't have a chance. And that's what's happening with so many of these vengeful, negative, downright dirty types of people. The flood is coming, the flood of problems, health issues, financial issues, because they just didn't want to do what was right. They allow the past to dictate their present and future. They allow people, places and things from the past to upset them. There are those who still holding on to the past because they think they'll have a chance with someone. And for some people, yeah, they'll have a chance. They'll have a chance for that person who all them years has some closet revenge going on. Now she going to jump out. He going to act up. I'm glad you came back. Wait a minute. I thought that we was going to work this thing out. Oh, yeah, we going to work this out. I'm going to get you for them times when you cheated on me. I'm going to get you for them times when I found out that what you was really up to when you was taking my money was A, B, and C. Oh, yeah, you wanted me back in your life? I'm coming, and I'm coming to whoop your bleep. <laughs> Whoa, what happened to that pretty woman? What happened to that guy that you still had feelings for? What happened to that one that you had been obsessing and contemplating and wishing and hoping and the Lord allowed this uh uh-huh because you're disrespectful you're disobedient you (laughs) didn't want to believe when he told you to get free some people falling in the traps falling in the traps the enemy is laying out some treats and they walking right into the trap the enemy is setting up Setting up some sweet things, some good things, some nice things. And they're going to go right toward them. And just like a mouse, they're going to get caught in the trap. The enemy says that the believers, even the half-hearted believers. He's saying that they are nothing more than cheese. Cheese that he ultimately is going to throw out like molded cheese, right? He going to use them, then he going to throw them out. So they think they all right. They think they all right playing both sides of the fence with God and with the devil. But the devil don't want them either. No more than God wants them. Because God said, I'm done talking to this rebellious people. We're seeing this right before our eyes in mainstream media. All these celebrities sold their souls. And they're very and the very ones who they follow after, their handlers and all of these other people that they think are so special, they throwing them out. They getting old. We don't need you anymore. You're not as good as you once were. We're looking for some new blood. We're looking for some fresh meat. And then if you talk too much, we're going to tell your secrets. You're not going to have a legacy. You're not going to have any type of good reputation when it's all said and done. Matter of fact, didn't you disrespect my daughter? Didn't you disrespect my son? Didn't you disrespect somebody in the camp a long time ago? Yeah, that's right. I'm going to pay this person back. And that's what we see with some of these celebrities. It's just old money paying some people back from some dirty stuff. See, some people didn't follow the rule book way back when. Some people broke code. Some people did a lot of things and they thought that certain groups weren't going to find out. And now they found out and now they're going to pay them back for those things, too. I know some of you all, you don't want to believe certain things in your own family, but maybe you'll believe it when you look at mainstream media and you see how the elitists are fighting with each other. And you see why some folks legacy is not a legacy is nothing more than them going down with a bunch of messed up things their secrets are coming out and their families are ashamed of them and ashes to ashes dust to dust what's in darkness comes out in the light some folks who don't go along with the old school programming old school protocol old school fraternal organizations and codes and all that they are rebelling they are non-traditional they don't like to be following any type of leaders they don't like to be put in any type of box they don't like anybody threatening them or telling them what they're going to do to them and so they rebel they turn on folks like snakes they tell their business they put them on blast 
And meanwhile, some of the upper elitists say that's why we shouldn't be having them type. And they even break it down to ethnicity. I told you we shouldn't have mi got mixed up with that group. Because you see how they act. They act messed up with their own ethnicity. And then they come into our group and then they want to mess over us. Well, we're not having it. And they make examples out of people too. And sometimes the elitist issues end up becoming our issues because then we see the mess out in the street or we see it in our communities or we see it when certain folks and our families get mixed up with some people. Cause of revenge. They're coming after you. You thought we were you were you thought that everything was OK. We shook hands on it. It's good. It's all right. He said that he was good. She said that it was all right. Somebody said that they forgave. And then they turn right around and they get you. So there was no forgiveness. No. I just had to come up with something just to get you here so that I could tell you about yourself and break you down a little bit more. I thought that we were cool. Nope. Mm -mm. Some people will sit back and wait 10, 15, 20, 30 some years. That's why some people we will never go back around. We we used to, but not anymore, because the Lord said that she will never forgive you for this. He will never be all right with you as a result of what you said and what you did. And that's why for some of us, we end up having to break up, disconnect, separate from some folks because they're unforgiving. They're not going to bend. They're not going to show love. They're so badly scarred, so badly wounded, obsessing on all of your grievances, on all of the uh, offenses Feeling like you are the enemy. They're not going to get over some things. So that's why for some of for some individuals, they got to go into another country. For other individuals, they got to go out into another state. Other people, they got to change their entire name and their history. Because you got some people that are just so hell bent on paying people back. Orchestrating the plan. The closet. Revenge. That people got going on and then one day surprise so we take this moment right now and we pray we pray for those individuals who have some people who are still disgruntled from the past exes uh, former in-laws best friends former workers many individuals we pray in Jesus name Lord that those who are walking right with you that they will have the protection that they need that you will put your angels all around them and that you will guard them and that you will guide them as well to where they need to be. I pray in Jesus name, Lord, that those who are contemplating on uh, revenge, Lord, that you will just change their mindset, cause them to look the other way, cause them to be forgiving, cause them to stop holding grudges and cause them to stop reaching out to people who are doing toxic things, who are wishing evil, who got a spirit of witchcraft. A spirit of narcissism, a spirit of unforgiveness, a spirit of stubbornness, and any other spirit. We ask, Lord Jesus, that they'll stop building allegiances with people who are nothing more than vengeful. We ask these things in Jesus' name. One thing about being, befriending an ex, especially one who you know that you have done some dirty things, that ex could be wishing evil on your current life. That ex could also be hoping and wishing and praying that you'll come back only to pay you back for all of what you've done. Some of these people will come back into your life with the intention of not blessing you. Not at least for as long as you think they may temporarily bless you, but then they're going to one day have that dialogue with you. And that dialogue might also end up being someone hurting you. It may not be them. It may be someone else. So you've got to be careful when people out of the clear blue start reconnecting with you. You've got to be mindful of those that you've kept around who are exes. And you also have to realize that when you allow your past to show up in your present, you are also affecting your present as well as the people in it. It doesn't make them insecure. It doesn't make them unstable. But they are conscious of what you're doing. And God has a way of taking what is in darkness and putting it out there in the light. And a person doesn't have to do a bunch of snooping, even though some people will. I know in the past I have. But what God can do is he can show us some things. 
about our family members, our friends, our past acquaintances and former workers and in-laws and so forth. And when he does show us some of that unflattering stuff, it's not for us to dismiss it. But it's for us to be very guarded about who we're talking to, about who's coming around, about who has intentions of showing up. And we will be ready because we wear the full armor of God, according to Ephesians 6. I tell you that God will not be mocked and neither will the people of God. When you are walking according to his will and you are not allowing the enemy to trick you into believing something that is untrue. That's half the battle right there because you know that you're not going to be misled. You're not going to believe the lies. You're not going to go along with the programming. So when or if they should show up, allow the Lord to give you the words to speak. Don't be sentimental. Don't be weak. Don't go along with past programming. Be open to what God has to say. And what God is going to use you to do. It may be something that you really don't want to do. But it just might be something that's going to free you or free someone else. So just be prepared. You never know. God is a mysterious God. He knows what is in a man's heart and in a man's mind and in a woman's heart and a woman's mind. He knows what that person is up to who's planning some revenge. Well, that is it. Blessings to you. Please do check the description box for anything that might be of interest. You've been listening to YouTube NM Enterprise 7. If you haven't given, we do welcome donations, so please do give. And thank you once again for your support.